So looking at the incremental numbers here, uh, and I might ask for one of my staff to come forward if we take this further, but it looks like in the 18-19 year you have a really significant lift up of an additional 70 million. Okay. And that tracks forward out into 24-25 where cumulatively we would have been adding the equivalent of 280 million in ongoing permanent savings. And, and that clearly has implications then for our debt, to, our, our debt to revenue ratio. If we were to be able to uh, achieve 280 million additional OPEX savings by 2025 in a permanent way, uh, you could hold your debt to revenue ratios at the current projected settings. But our strong advice to you is that the only way we could credibly identify those sorts of savings would be to talk about cutting service levels. Thank you very much. Councillor Cashmore, have you you'd finished your question? <coughs> uh, Councillor Clough. This is a question really for the Chief Executive. Um, we, we had uh, Lester Levy from Auckland Transport emphatically um, pointing out to us uh, <coughs> on Tuesday the fact that we're basically treading water. We are making no gains or no forward movement on anything and we're treading water at the moment if anything we're going backwards um, and we know on the on the transportation side of things we're, we're basically 400 million short per year and in total for our budgets including other departments we're over half a billion per year that we just simply don't have in order to actually stay where we are, let alone improve things, and of course congestion's a major thing. I, I've seconded the mayoral proposal of 2.5%, but I, I'm really alarmed that we're not at 3.5%. I have to be quite open about that. Last year, um, when we adopted 80 months ago, the LTP, which effectively was 3.5%, and last year we went 25 and we're 25 again, but I, I'm asking the Chief Executive, what does that mean really what are we really doing what what are the consequences of us adopting the two and a half as compared to three and a half and of course there's going to be discussion about two percent but that one percent from three and a half in the LTP down to two and a half I mean what are the huge consequences of that reduction uh, through you chair look I think there are probably three three part answers to that question. The first is uh, that of all of our activities that um, Auckland Council funds, the one that we need to take the most care with is transport, because that is where the, the major proportion of our investment is going. And with 3% population growth occurring in Auckland at the moment, if that growth rate is maintained, transport is the activity that will continue to come under the most demand pressure. So as we, if we're going to maintain our investment programme in transport, and ATAP has given you an indication of a $4 billion gap, and you know, within the ATAP team we would say that we think that number is a conservative number, and clearly there is ambition to to, to try and stretch and accelerate the transport investment program. So if we're going to do that, um, the notion that we can find significant efficiencies within the transport activity is a, it's a more challenging proposition. Uh, when we think about 2.5% for one year and uh, the, you know, the Mayor has been elected on a platform of being really clear about the fiscal prudence that he wants to lead. So our job in the organisation is to try and work out what, what do we think are reasonable savings and efficiency targets. And the advice that you're getting uh, from Sue and Matthew and the team is that the 2.5 is going to, if we're going to go with the 2.5% rate increase over an extended period of time, they are very challenging targets, but we're going to back ourselves to try and achieve them. And if at 2%, they become unmanageable without you having very important and honest 
uh, conversations about trade-offs with yourselves and then the, in turn the community. So I think that you know, one year is fine and what that will lead into is a very, very important conversation with, led by the Mayor during the long-term plan compilation which actually deals with all of the levers that we've got and the other operating revenue streams is an absolutely crucial part of that conversation because without, uh, without being unkind towards any elected member, whenever we do think about new revenue streams and we put them on the table and it is more user pays, um, there isn't a great appetite to embrace those by the community or elected members. So what we're en encouraging you to do as a new council is to have the all-in conversation about all of the levers that you've got and to agree those trade-offs led by uh, your Mayor. Yep, I'm, I'm sure you're aware, Councillor Crow, Crow, of the, uh, the fuel uh, tax proposal which would put the burden not on the ratepayer, but would bring revenue in, which is what we need for our debt to revenue uh, ratio, uh, but do it in relation to what use people are making of the roads, particularly peak hour, when we eventually get to consider other options like uh, congestion tax. Yeah, right, I'm we sorry, have- Sorry, could I just, do, uh, and it is a comment here, but it's just as your chair of finance, or the council's chair of finance, I'm just deeply concerned about the severe pressure we are under. We're under yeah. severe pressure, and 2.5 is, is yep. Yep. testing us. Yep, I think we're looking for constructive rather than severe pressure. Um, my next uh, call is to Councillor Hills. Uh, to Mr Mayor, um, just a question for Matthew. So um, do you have figures, you might not have them on you, on what we're saving per year um, since amalgamation, and what was the savings last year? So we're saving, we have to look for these savings in the next budget, but we're also currently saving quite a lot already. Is that quite... uh, so, so through the chair, uh, not looking back at my fingertips, uh, but I know approximately. Um, so since amalgamation, uh, the same budgeting process of, of ensuring um, there are healthy targets in front of departments and CCOs to meet. Uh, and I've been here three years and can't remember a year where the number that we put in, inside people's budgets was much less than 30 million. Um, so variously we've been budgeting between 30 and 40 million per annum in terms of annual savings targets and I, I think the cumulative total since amalgamation is currently sitting at around the 270 to 280 million mark. The baseline there that you're comparing to is the previous um, LTPs of the legacy councils. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Sayers. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just picking up on the constructive comments of the uh, Chief Executive and Councillor uh, um, Clo, um, around the pace of transport, investment into transport and the ability to be able to do that. Um, so my, my question is just around those actual savings that you've just mentioned, you know, 30, 40 million a year up to date, it compounded 280 odd million, um, which I would say as a percentage of the total operational cost wouldn't be particularly spectacular in the commercial sector. However, where are the savings spent? Are the, are, where are those savings, where have they been spent? Can you give us a feel for where those savings have gone, what they've been spent on? So through the chair, I don't know how to answer where the savings have been spent. Good question, uh, I, I think so, part so of the... So they're savings, councillor. So we haven't spent haven't them, we've spent saved it. the money. Yeah. Yep. OK. Haven't, haven't rated for it either, is that right? Oh, oh, OK, look, I think that's something we could explore further um, in, a, in a different setting. Um, can I now have... Uh, uh, if, uh, Mr Mayor, just to, just to qualify that question, um, what I'm trying to get out there is we have a budgets and we have actuals. So when we either underspend or overspend against those, just wondering where that uh, where that money goes. It just goes into the books as a reported savings. Is that, is that what you're saying? Uh, so if I can just ask the CEO I'll to uh, respond so, on that. Yep. Thank you. So what we're trying to do through you, Chair, is we're, we're essentially accepting and agreeing a savings target 
as the budget is set. And so the budgets are reduced to reflect that target. Mm -hmm. Under the Local Government Act, we run a balanced budget. So we assume that we will achieve those savings and therefore we rate the community at a lower, at a lower total amount because we run a balanced budget. Thank you. So there's not extra savings that delivers cash into a jar that someone else could no. dip into. It's no, not I that. understand that. Thank you. OK. Uh, Councillor Mike Lee, next question, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I just would like to remind members that this is a, a mayoral proposal um, for public consultation, and the, the mayor has a strong mandate, and I, I respect that. Um, that being said, in terms of the rating policy changes, I would like to record on record my strong reservations in regard to a, a visitor, visitor levy. Sorry, sorry, Mike, uh, Councillor Lee, can I, can I, this is a question time. You'll have a chance to give a speech on this shortly, but if you've got a question, can you f just focus your comments okay, on the question, uh, uh, please? Okay, I'll come back to that, Mr Mayor. In terms of other budget changes, um, the, while the introduction of a living wage over three years is quite clear and explicit, given this is a public consultation document, I think we need to have clarity with all these points. Mass transit network, I'm not sure what that means. Um, mass transit is another word, a technical word if you like, uh, and some people might use it even euphemistically for light rail. So I think we need May I, said, may I ask, could we have not, could we have some clarity about what we're talking about, a mass transit network? Secondly, I know what your intentions are. You've spelled them, spelt them out in regard to homelessness, but I think there needs to be something a little bit more explanatory about the point of homelessness. You are trying to tackle it or ameliorate it, and I think um, that needs to be included. Um, the, uh, another question is would it not be wise, given growing public concerns and given that it has been talked about for almost 10 years now, um, to refer to progressing the central interceptor? Um, because work is going underway and I think we need to, and I believe the council is very much actively involved in its own right as well as water care. That's another uh, question. Um, my final question comes to the VEX matter of costs, because it is um, something of, of growing concern, and, and I hear the points made around the table. Um, I um, was, th the Chief Executive pointed out the, uh, our problems with, with transport, and that population is growing 3%, and, you know, Tauranga has come and landed in Auckland over the last two years or whatever. S sorry, I, Mike, I, can you just tell us what is, the question my is? My question is this. Through you, Mr Mayor, to the Chief Executive, I was a director of Auckland Transport for six years. I have a number of ideas and I have information whereby significant savings could be made in transport. So my question is, why don't you debrief me? Because I can be helpful in saving a lot of money. Thank you. Right, so we have... Uh Three and a half questions there. Um, can I get Matthew to address the first three questions? Serious, I don't know whether the There's Chief Executive wants question. to take on the last one. Deadly serious, Mr Mayor. Uh, through the Chair, um, not sure if I'll get all three, but I'll do a couple. Um, so on, on mass transit, and, and Stephen, you might want to comment as well. Um, so what we're... What's going on uh, across the organisation and really in partnership with NZTA is, is a program of work to uh, look at congestion on the isthmus and to, to think, uh, think pr in a pretty focused way around whether uh, light rail, so trams uh, or buses, uh, are going to answer um, best uh, that congestion challenge. So, the provision we're making in our budgets here is to enable uh, the team at Auckland Transport to continue that work in respect to the tram option uh, and also to make some provision for capital expenditure uh, 
uh, along a network that could be utilised either uh, for tram or potentially bus depot as well. So I guess the point I'm making there is, and I'm not sure uh, Stephen might want to comment at the moment, we're using the mass transit uh, header uh, in part to reflect that there is still ongoing work as to whether trams or some form of bus solution is going to best uh, meet, meet the challenge. If well, I can... Auckland Transport have already done, spent a lot of money uh, indicating that buses just cannot cope. So I think we need to move on a bit rather than spending the same money over and over and over again. Uh, Mike, Mike we're just taking the questions and I've already got well, questions from the you on the, on the okay. table. Uh, Matthew, can I... The other questions were in relation to homelessness. If you'd like, I can answer that one. Um, the money that we've put alongside, uh, put into the annual plan for consultation, uh, is half a million dollars, which obviously if you were buying houses with it would go nowhere, but it was the request made by the key uh, NGOs working with the homeless that this council perform a coordinating role, bringing together central government agencies, local government, NGOs and others and the private sector with an interest in this. I thought the proposal was sound, uh, coming from people that have got a good track record. So at this stage, that's where that half a million dollars no, you're would go. You're missing, you're missing my point. The question is, you've got the word homelessness just sitting there. You should be saying coordinating solutions to home. What I'm saying is, this is going out to the public. Let's be perfectly clear what we're offering here. Sorry, sorry offering. If, I, if I might give you a clarification of that. This is simply our decision. But what's going out to the public will be a consultation document that will explain that, just as you've suggested. Uh, Matthew, the, uh, the question was um, the central interceptor. Yeah. So, so through the chair, uh, central interceptor uh, is obviously a multi-year uh, program. Uh, at this stage, we've got it time to come forward for consideration under the LTP. Uh, and there's a lot of conversation uh, at the moment between stormwater and water care around some of the issues involved in that. But so we would be saying it's not really uh, appropriate for this next year's annual budget, but certainly is a pretty key item for the LTP. And we'd be, be expecting business case information to come forward to this table early next year. No money is being spent on planning for the central interceptor this year, you're saying? Well, if you're talking about the planning stage, uh, Councillor, I'm sure that there will be resources. I think you need to indicate that. Uh, so I'm sure that water care are still busy in the planning phase, but we're not, we're not at the substantive construction phase yet. Okay, and uh, can I finally ask uh, the Chief Executive to address some of the questions? Uh, so just to <coughs> confirm uh, through you, Mayor, obviously the consultation document will come will be prepared over the holiday period and will come back to the governing body for approval and um, those the matters that have been headlined in this resolution will be fleshed out uh, consistently with the Mayor's <coughs> proposal and the conversations that you've had uh, through Finance and Performance Committee and today. Uh, on the matter of um, opportunities to reduce costs in the transport space, I think um, my understanding is that those matters that, that Councillor Lee has put forward have, have been considered by the Auckland Transport Management and the Board. If you don't think they've done a satisfactory job of that, we're happy to have a session with you and, take, and hear those matters. They have not, I can, I can assure you. It's sorry, Mr. sorry, I, I don't want to debate now, Councillor. I want just the questions oh, and the oh, answers. Have you, have you finished the answer? I look forward happy to, to hear. Stephen. And look, just to clarify, the, so the reason we haven't mentioned the central interceptor as a specific project is that there is design and planning uh, budget allocated in the existing 10-year plan that Watercare are utilising, and at the moment they're not proposing to change the phasing of the central interceptor in the long-term plan. So it just stays as a project that's in stream, it's work, it, it's underway in terms of its well advanced, in terms of its planning and, and initial design, and they will bring us an updated phasing timetable for our LTP discussions.